Good morning and welcome to this video, a uh, very quick video really, on the EcoFlow Delta 2. I purchased this about ooh, three or four weeks ago and I've been playing around with it ever since and I've got to say, I think it's amazing. But the reason behind buying it was initially for the camper van uh, because I want to go to Spain next year and I was worried about running my three-way fridge on and how I was going to keep the fridge cold for that 33 hour crossing from Southampton. I was going to buy a new fridge, be it a compressor fridge, which would have probably survived quite nicely on uh, on tick over. But then I thought to myself, you know, I'm not buying a fridge for 700 quid just for a trip to Spain. So I thought I'd keep the fridge and I'll look into an EcoFlow. So I bought the EcoFlow and I've got the Delta 2, which is about 1200 watts. I'm not gonna go into Pacifics with it because everybody knows what they've got and what they do and what they don't do. But I tried it out on the boat, which is where it is at the moment. Uh, I bought a couple of solar panels, which are 180 watts each. They were semi-flexible ones. Uh, I'll put a little link up or a picture up. Uh, they were on Amazon uh, in, the, uh, in the video at some point, maybe about now. Yeah. After discovering that it was working quite well, it even powered the boat and I was using it overnight for like things like TV, boiling kettles and stuff like that. Brilliant, no problems at all. Obviously it needs a bit of sunshine to charge it up on the solar. But I then decided to buy the extra battery, which I now have as well. So I've now got 2,200 watts, kilowatts of power, as it were to double my capacity to make it a little bit more viable and not worry about, oh, am I gonna to use too much? Have I got enough to do that? I don't worry about it anymore. As long as there's a reasonable amount of uh, high cloud as opposed, to, low clouds tend to be darker and really blocks the sun out. The high cloud is closer to the sun and it tends to penetrate it better and burn it off a lot quicker. As long as there's a reasonable bit of light and I'll show you what we've got here today they work quite well. Let's take a little look at the unit and I can tell you what it's doing right now. So if we switch it on, we are showing 20% on the top one and 54% on the bottom one. No input whatsoever on either. And you will find there is a bit of power there and if you press the button once it turns the screen off if you press it again and press it again that should turn it off but it won't turn it off because it knows there's a bit of power coming in from the panels one press will just shut the screens down but those two little white dots will stay on purely and simply because it's sensing a little bit of power but it's not enough to register or charge the unit because it's very early in this case the sun hasn't quite come round yet it uses a few watts I reckon around 20 watts or so to operate the system anyway so currently we are picking up a 47 watt input which is being divided between the two eco flows uh, we've got 27 watts being outputted into the extra battery so our percentages currently are 20 percent and 55 percent and our overall percentage of power uh, i'll put up in the screen as a screenshot so let's get outside. Now out here, I've done a mock-up. I've been playing with the panels, positionings, and everything else over the last few weeks. And where they're currently sitting is certainly the most productive for me in this environment. Let's take a little look at those. And this is them hanging over my side rail. Now, that gives you a better idea. These are 180 watts a piece and there's two of them and they are paralleled so that i've kept the voltage at 12 volts 
but I'm getting the maximum amps out of the battery, out of the solar panels when the sun is directly on them. These are flexible panels to a degree, but I thought it was going to be a great idea, but for me it didn't really work out. So I decided to put them in a little timber frame and to make them a little bit more rigid, I put some little hooks over the top like that. So these panels currently, you can pick them up, put a little support underneath and aim them at the sun. I have these little, they're old slats out of the bed from the camper. And all I'm doing at the moment is literally pushing that up like that. And then this way I get the benefit of the earlier sun as well as the lower sun in the afternoon. Bearing in mind this is January sun, so we're doing quite well. So that is my basic current setup and it's working really well. So now I've just got to refine it, trace cables and stuff like that so that it's a lot neater. Uh, I've done the hook scenario over the handrail because I want to be able to remove them when I take the boat to sea. So they're not a permanent fixture for me, but they're going to work really, really well. And they, they are doing exactly that. Now, a couple of things that I'm going to just let you know about that I've discovered with the uh, Delta II. I don't know whether the other ones are the same. I really got no idea. I'm only going by my experiences from here. The instruction booklet is a little bit vague and doesn't really tell you a great deal. Now, I've seen videos with people talking about whether or not you can leave the solar permanently hooked up to the unit. So uh, by that I mean, can you leave it plugged into your solar panels? Can it go through the day? Can it shut down overnight? And will it fire up again in the morning without you doing anything about it? For example, if you're not around to activate anything. The answer to that question is you can. EcoFlower don't comment on it whatsoever, really, not in the paperwork, at least. But the problem I have found by leaving it permanently hooked up to the solar is that you lose connectivity with your Bluetooth. Now, the app is fantastic. You can do all your settings. You know all about that. You've watched plenty of other videos before you've seen this one. But it can be done and it works OK. But what you'll find is if you lose the ability to connect to your EcoFlow via your app, what you'll have to do is unplug the solar connection into the back of the unit, uh, switch it off, switch it back on again, plug your solar unit back in and your Bluetooth will work. Now, in the morning, when the sun first comes up, you also find that the, the device will be showing you a percentage of charge, maybe 20, kick, they generally kick in around 20, 25 watts. But your little blue dial that rotates to indicate it's charging, that doesn't move. Don't worry about that, that's perfectly normal. That is basically, I'm going back to what I said earlier, where the system has an operating voltage. And all that's happening there is that voltage that it is receiving, albeit low, is just being used to operate the system. So it's not really generating a charge to the battery. Don't worry about it, it's absolutely fine. I found generally, they kick in, the, the the dial will start rotating, as it were. That kicks in around 25, 20 to 30%, depending on whether you've got two batteries hooked up or just the single unit. But I've got to say, they're amazing. And since going outside, uh, coming back in, we're now back up, we're now climbing up to 195 watts of input. We've crept up to 24% on that battery and we are 58% on that one. As you can see, the base one is getting 99 watts, or 94, sorry, can't see for loving all money, of the actual total output. So it's kind of being divided 50-50. If you've got a bit of sun, incredible. Today's a bit hazy. We're not doing really, 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 really well. Uh, on a good day, those 280 watt panels, which should equate to 360 watts, the best I've had out of it so far is about 290. That was with a clear sky, but a very short period of time. 
and it is January. You've got to remember the sun's not as powerful as it would be uh, in May, June, July, August, etc. It works really, really well. We know how much they cost. I think I paid just under eight for mine, for the base unit, and, and 640 I got a second battery for recently, which was quite good value. I'll put the links up, or I'll put a picture up of where I bought those from. They were both from uh, eBay, if I remember rightly. But yeah, perfect. Next day delivery, no problems whatsoever. I think DPD delivered them, if I remember rightly, and you can't really go wrong with them. They're pretty good. So that's it, really. So I've got a power unit that I can take wherever I want to go. I will use it in the camper van. It will look after my fridge on inverter, on mains, or on 12 volt. I haven't decided yet whether or not it's better to run it on 12 volt to the fridge or on the inverter on mains. Got to work out which one's the most energy efficient to make the batteries last the longest time. I haven't done a test on the fridge yet, leaving it overnight, but I will do. Obviously, I'm still chasing the sun a little bit in January, so I've not been able to free it up for a whole 24 hours to leave it plugged in uh, on the camper. But I will do that soon. But I've got to say, overall, can't fault them. Really pleased with it. It is an investment, without a doubt. I looked at Jackery and I looked at all the other companies and Delta 2 suited my needs. They're very light. They're easy to manage. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. And the app makes them so much easier to use. But like I say, if you're looking to do something like this, then it's brilliant. Hope you've enjoyed that little video. Hope it's of some help to you. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Catch you soon with more camper van stuff. And I've got to do some Porsche gear. I'm missing my Porsche so badly. So that's about it from me. Any comments, anything you think I'm doing wrong, etc. Zoe, put your hand down. Uh, let me know. Thanks for watching, hope that helps. Uh, take care, bye for now.